All right, there we go, first fish. That didn't take long. Fishing for bluegill and pumpkin seed today. Looking once again for that elusive 11 inch public lake bluegill in New York. Very, very hard for me to find. 10 inches are hard to find, heck. <laughs> I'm just catching release fishing today. A nice quality bluegill to start off. That's probably at least nine and a half inches, maybe nine and three quarters. That's a nice one. Get a quick measurement on him and then let him go. Real quality gill. This is looking pretty promising. I'll try to explain the rig I'm using here right away. I got a sliding casting bubble along the main line so I can wing it way out there if I need to. And uh, it's half filled with water. Then I got a tiny barrel swivel, and then a, I don't know, somewhere around 15 inch leader, something like that. And uh, then I got a little uh, 16 ounce jig head, and I'm putting um, super worms on that jig head. Here's a nice little bluegill. That last one was uh, nine and a third or so. This one's probably around eight. <laughs> I love a hot sunfish bite. It's been about 10-15 seconds since I turned the camera off, <laughs> recasted back out and whatever, and another fish. This is especially hot bite for fall. In the spring it's normally like this when they spawn, but in the fall it's a little harder to find a really hot bite like this for me. But this is the same way it was when I was fishing with uh, Leo Shang the other day from Extreme Philly Fishing. It's a nice, beautiful pumpkin seed. I like fishing these guys on my walleye gear, you know, walleye rod with six pound test, so I can kind of keep some control over them. In places like this, beavers will take sticks out to the middle and just drop them because they like to be annoying like that. And these sunfish will glide back and forth until they uh, they find one of those things. And when they find one of those things, it's it's usually game over. You get snagged up. So I like being able to sort of rip them in, if that makes any sense. It's a nice quality pumpkin seed right there. It's over eight and a half inches, but really round. It's a beauty. They are hitting so fast. I'm gonna have to like show you the cast and and everything like the whole the whole process on one of these casts is it's just beautiful how fast they're hitting this guy isn't putting up much of a fight another smaller bluegill love using these jig heads you always catch them like right on the edge of the mouth not always but usually nice looking gill though Slowing down just a tad, but me and Leo did just slam this a couple days ago. So I kind of expect that, you know, for the rest of the fish to be a little picky. We kept some and we released some, so there's definitely some smart fish in the area. This guy feels like he has a little bit of weight. No, he's not that big. Get all these weeds off of him. It's a nice standard bluegill. So here's my sliding casting bubble. I switched out for a size 4 hook. I'm just going to thread this guy onto the hook long ways. Before I was doing it wacky, but they were picking it a little bit better. I saw it work pretty well. And I'm just going to show you how fast these hits are. Kind of fishing in the transition zone here. A lot of times sunfish will move shallow for uh, a short period during the fall. And then uh, move back deep again. Yeah, something just touched it. You can see the bubble bobbing when it goes under a little bit. Something picked at it. 
but they'll move shallow for a period and go deep again and in that process they'll go through like a, a middle zone that's half shallow half deep That was a slow bite. Pretty much all the bites so far have been faster than that one. But it is starting to slow down a little bit. Another gill. Perfect, right on the edge of the lip there. I don't know if that's a gill, that might be a hybrid. Because he has the pumpkin seed marks on his face, the turquoise, but he doesn't have the red spot that a pumpkin seed normally has. I believe that's a hybrid. A beautiful hybrid too, probably nine inches or close to that, right around there. Hybrid bluegill pumpkin seed quality. Of course, this cast, I get it like literally right as I t it touches the water. <laughs> I picked the wrong cast to show you guys <laughs> how hot it is. <laughs> Whatever. These smaller guys aren't putting up a good fight, but I am using heavier tackle. So I'm kind of skipping them across the surface. Yeah, another average gill that I ever eat in three quarters. Something like that. Nice looking gill. This guy was pretty shallow. He was pretty close to me at least. He was kind of in the transition, but closer to me. Doesn't feel very big. That slop isn't helping either. Oh, he's a pumpkin seed? Yeah, he's a pumpkin seed, that's why. Nice, beautiful pumpkin seed. It's pretty skinny though. These skinnier ones don't fight as hard. Man, that's a beauty. Got this one fishing the superworm wacky style. So you get all that, that good movement because you're only hooking it once through the middle. It stays alive. Ah, stay out of the slot. Another nice seed. Cool. A nice mix here. Beauty. This guy was out deep. So my estimate is that they haven't moved shallow yet for the fall. The fall run. They're still spread out. And you know, it, even though it's sort of the time of year that they normally go shallow. It's been extra hot out, and I believe that's why they're still they're still spread out. Here's a nice gill. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that nice one. Quality one, a little over nine probably. Instant hit on a wacky rig super worm. A lot of jumps and stuff around me. I wish I brought a jitterbug for bass. They're not really jumps, but like boils. Jeepers. Never seen so many come in flat like that. They're just not fighting at all. Wow, that's a nice one. Holy cow. There's a gill. Oh my gosh, that's a big one. That's what I'm talking about. There's a 10 incher. <laughs> Look at that. See the gap in its in its mouth there when I hold it? That is an absolute beauty. There is a big gill for upstate New York public water. I gotta get a quick measurement on this one. And then let them go, of course. I mean, I'm letting them all go, but even if I'm I'm keeping them, I still, uh, I still release ones of this quality. Take a here oh yeah he's well over 10 he's 10 and a quarter what a beauty <laughs> 
That is awesome. All right, one quick photo. I'll get back to you with the release. Got to get a little wet here to release this guy because of the slop in the water. Here you go, buddy. No, nope, wrong way. They always go the wrong way. There we go. He's gone. This is really basically the same thing as fishing with a weighted adjustable slip float. So it's, it's similar to bobber fishing. It just has a few advantages over it. You can adjust the sensitivity, cast it out further. I don't think this is a sunfish. I got a bass or something here. Cool, a little largemouth. I'm a dead wax, uh, not wax worm, super worm. Neat. That's pretty cool. Something's still hitting it, so there's something left on it. Got him. Otherwise, I'd do it wacky every time, because, uh, I've kind of been doing that because the the movement really helps with finicky fish, but if they're just it's a little harder to oh wow that's a it's a little pumpkin seed <laughs> it's a little harder to uh, not get stripped with it though. Another little guy from out in the middle feels like. Honestly, that big one didn't even feel that, that big either, though. Usually the big ones, like, glide back and forth like a kite and feel much bigger. This guy is a little guy, though. Yeah, a little bluegill. This guy was right close in here. I guess some are starting to transition back shallow. They're really just spread out though, I guess, so it might not be the case exactly. Oh, shoot, caught someone else's line. No! <laughs> there we go. Another bluegill. Cool. This casting bubble method is really good when they're spread out like this. Because you can fish the casting bubble near and far and everywhere in between. You have a really wide reach with it. And it works. Nice little seed. Sweet. Whoa. Went for a spin there. Awesome. Great colors. There's definitely more fish to be caught in here, but I think after this one I might wrap it up because I have some uh, some bass fishing to go do. Unless this guy's a big one, but I don't think so. He's probably just average. Yeah, he's just another average one, I think. Oh, no, he's actually a nice one for pumpkin seed. Well, best pumpkin seed of the day. At least nine inches. It's a good one to end on. Real quality pumpkin seed. Love their orange chest. It's a real nice fish.